Hello friends, Hans here. I'm at the Beauty Refined Office Space build-out today. My wife and I bought this uh, office space here in the Denver Tech Center for her growing med spa, Beauty Refined. And we've been hard at it the past couple weeks. Uh, it's been madness, to be honest with you. Uh, doing a lot of walls and paint and lighting upgrades, etc. But now it's a time to address this floor. And I decided to do a video on it because um, our goal is a beautiful finished concrete floor. And it seems like there's a lack of uh, information and process on how to get there. So I thought I'd, I'd uh, bring you along for this ride as I uh, tackle this project. What we have existing is a pretty good slab of concrete poured in the mid 70s. And it's in very good structural condition. There's no major cracks, uh, anything like that. But there are a lot of surface imperfections. Um, over the years, there's been paint spilled on it carpet glue, uh, carpet throughout most of the space, to be honest with you. Um, and wherever there was carpet tack strips along the edges, um, you know, when those nails are put into the concrete and, they're, and they come out, they usually leave a, leave a little divot. And so uh, we will be repairing that. I'll be grinding the surface to get it all nice and flat. And then we'll be applying a concrete overlay or a microtopping. And I'll explain more about that when we get there. Then uh, some really neat dyes to get a, a beautiful modeled um, kind of uh, effects to the concrete. And then of course applying a commercial uh, sealer system or industrial commercial sealer system. And so uh, we'll kind of step through the process and, and uh, learn as we go. I'm going to be using Duramin products. Um, I'm not a Duramin salesman. I'm not getting paid by Duramin for this video. Um, but I did do a bunch of research and those are the products that I ended up on for this particular project. You'll have me mention some of their product names. I'll try to explain what they do as we go. So let's get started. Okay, so the first step in our process here of the cement overlay is going to be repairing all these little nail bits. These are where carpet tack strips were nailed down to the concrete in the past. And when they were removed, uh, the nail coming out often brought a little chunk of cement with it. So to repair it, we're going to use the Dermin product called Param FP. It is designed just for this task, repairing uh, little damage areas like this. It is cement-based, but highly engineered for um, performance. Very high compressive strength. Um, it sets very fast, so we work in very small batches. I actually uh, mix it up in a solo cup. Uh, you'll see that I use solo cups for about everything under the sun. Um, so about that kind of volume is uh, what I can work with in this format, working with these small repairs. I'll uh, get it in place, uh, I'll tool it flat, and it'll be ready to, uh, to be ground uh, with the rest of the floor uh, tomorrow. So we've got our nail divots uh, from the carpet tack strips fixed up with the Param FP. Um, that's looking really good. It sat overnight and uh, we're ready to grind the floor now. So this is a 10 inch uh, concrete floor grinder. I, I rented this today. Um, kind of a nasty beast. It's very heavy. Um, hard to move by yourself up the stairs. I can uh, definitely testify to that. Uh, but it's going to do pretty good for this small space. Um, we are going to be doing this wet, well actually I'd say damp, just enough water to keep the dust down and uh, cool the cutting blade. Um, so it's going to make a little bit of a mess. We're going to have some mud in here, uh, but it won't be too bad to clean up. Definitely not so much water that we're making puddles and that kind of thing. So with that said, uh, we're going to go ahead and get this thing fired up. I'll do some time lapse for you so you can uh, see how it goes.
So we've got the grinder work finished. Um, I went and took that thing back. Glad to see it gone. Um, what I found is that around the edges, the grinder, the big 10 inch floor grinder, could only get so close to the wall. So I'm going to take my 5 inch uh, wet polisher with a turbo wheel and just make a very quick pass along the edges to get any high spots, mostly where those nail divot uh, were, repairs were made. Um, get all that knocked down perfectly flat with the rest of the floor and then we can get on to getting this thing nice and clean. Alright, so as you can see, uh, the floor is nice and clean. Uh, it took me quite a bit longer than you might imagine. Several iterations of uh, you know sweeping, um, using the wet vac, mopping several times until my rinse water was nice and clean. Uh, but now we have the floor real nice and clean. Uh, so we're ready to start the overlay process. And the first step in the process is to apply a coat of CP1000. Now, CP1000 is Duramin's acrylic copolymer, and it serves several purposes, but in this format, when we're going to put it down, uh, CP, just straight CP1000 on this surface, it's going to help seal off the pore space that's in the concrete, and also make it so that our Scorfino overlay can uh, adhere well to the surface. Now, this first coat here, I'm going to get it down nice and heavy. Um, I'm going to actually just pour it onto the surface, and then use a 3 8 inch nap roller to roll it out nice and even and uh, we'll get a, a good heavy coat on there let it dry overnight and then a second coat tomorrow morning. All right, so our first coat of CP1000 has set overnight and dried. Um, it actually has a really cool look to it right now. Uh, in fact, you could argue that you could spend a little bit more time with the grinder to get it just right and just seal it and have a really cool looking floor. Uh, kind of more of an industrial look. But um, for us, we, we're going to proceed with this Graffino uh, micro topping or overlay. Um, and there's two parts to that. There's going to be the Graffino regular, uh, which is with the regular refers to the grain size. And then uh, we'll let that cure for maybe five or six hours, and then the Scorfino fine. Both these are going to be in white. Uh, you can also get this product in gray, but the white uh, I think is going to work best for our dye that we're going to put on after. So right now I'm going to put another coat of CP1000 down real quick, let that dry for a couple hours, and then we're going to get started with the Scorfino. Alright, so our second coat of CP1000 is now dry. Uh, I've got this Graffino White Regular mixed up here and it's ready to go. Uh, to apply the Graffino, I'm going to be using what's called a magic trowel. You can see this on the video there. <clears throat> it's kind of like a fancy squeegee, I guess you could say. Uh, for me, uh, this is going to be easiest to get a nice finish. Uh, and a nice even coat of the Scorfino down over the floor. <clears throat> you could also use a steel trowel. <clears throat> you probably want something bigger than this one if you're going to do a whole floor. I may be using this one uh, for some places where I, the magic trowel can't really get into, um, maybe around doors and some edges and such. So mostly this magic trowel and a little bit uh, of the steel trowel if need be.
So let's get started. Okay, so it has been 24 hours since the application of our top coat of Scrofino. Everything is nice and dry here, and we can move on to our next step in the process. Now, since um, this is basically the, the last surface that we're going to be working on, uh, I'm going to be wearing these covers on my shoes for uh, everything else in the overlay process. We want to keep everything nice and clean from this point on. Um, so the next step in the process is application of the dye. Now, this is Dur Durman's Pellucid Dye and it is carried in acetone. So I'll mix the dye with the acetone, and then I have a special acetone sprayer. And then uh, I'll go over the surface and get the uh, dye down as evenly as I can. 
Now our goal here with a dye is a mottled gray. Um, I have medium gray and light gray, and we're looking for a mixture of, of grays in the final appearance. So I'll start with a medium gray, get down, um, you know, a kind of a moderate coat, and then a very light coat of uh, light gray after that. So um, another thing with the acetone, very important, acetone, um, pretty nasty to work with. So you're going to want to have a respirator, uh, gloves, uh, glasses, you don't want anything in your eyes, or, or, you know, your respiratory system, anything. So make sure you have the right safety equipment for working with acetone. So uh, with that said, I'm going to get everything mixed up and we're going to put some color down. Well, as you can see, I've got the uh, dye process complete. It looks uh, really cool. Uh, I think we really got the effect that we're looking for with these two different grays. It is pretty dark, but I think it's going to work really nice in this space. We've got a lot of white to offset uh, the gray. Uh, it's been about six hours now. Uh, of course, now it's the middle of the night. Um, but everything is nice and dry, and we can move on to the sealing process. We're going to do this in two steps. Uh, the first is going to be Duramin's E32, which is a water-based epoxy primer. I'm going to be rolling this on with a 3 8 inch nap roller. Um, and of course, the challenge with rolling a sealer on is avoiding uh, roller marks. Um, I've had a lot of experience sealing concrete countertops, and uh, so I've kind of perfected my uh, technique to avoid roller marks, and that's back rolling. So I'll first get the product down on the floor, and then back roll it uh, to get a nice even uh, texture without any uh, roller marks. It takes some practice, you just kind of have to figure out how it works best for you. This is uh, the back rolling technique is what works best for me. Um, so I mixed up the E32 a few minutes ago. It does have a 30 minute induction time, which is occurring right now. As soon as that's finished, um, I'll get uh, started with rolling. All right, it's now been about 14 hours since I finished the E32, and uh, you could probably come out of the service about six hours afterwards, but uh, I've been fortunate to have a little bit more time today. So we can now start the last step in our sealing process, which is the Duramin U45. Now this is an aliphatic 
polyurethane, water-based, and it's their matte finish, uh, which is going to look beautiful in our space here. And uh, well, I'm going to apply it the same way as I did the E32. I'm going to roll it out, uh, spend extra time to avoid roller marks, and that'll be our last step for the sealing process. And after I'm finished with that, um, I'm going to let it sit for at least 24 hours. And uh, honestly, I'm probably going to give it 48 hours before I come out onto the surface to uh, start other work. So with that said, let's uh, get to work, and I'll do a time lapse so you can watch. Here are a few pictures of the finished floor. Hopefully this video has been useful, or at least helps you understand what you're getting into with the overlay process. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel, as I'll be posting a huge variety of videos very soon. Thanks for watching.